Hi, good morning. We are starting a reading vlog. I am on my way somewhere very exciting and unexpected, I think. Take your guesses right now. <laughs> I was initially going to do a changing my mind about books I thought I wouldn't like type video because I re-read, or not re-read, but picked up Happy Hour again. I tried to read it, I believe last summer actually, and I literally made it through like 10 pages and then I just put it away because I was not vibing and I really thought to myself like, we're gonna give it a second chance, but I have some thoughts about that book. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I just scrapped that video idea and I think I'm just gonna do a reading vlog and uh, just take it from there. And I'll discuss what I thought about the 78 pages <laughs> that I read of Happy Hour later, but I'm running a little bit late. I just wanted to introduce this vlog here. Um, so yeah, let's do it. Welcome to another reading vlog and we haven't done this in a while, so I'm excited. So yeah, let's do it. And we're back. <laughs> um, as you know, I am no longer like working here as much as I was before because I have another job. However, um, the owner reached out and they are just in need of somebody to fill in a couple shifts here and there. And I said, yes. <laughs> so, um, Charlie's in the States visiting his family. So I was like, I don't need weekends. I can work at my favorite place. So yeah. Uh, you will actually see the bookstore for a little bit longer this summer before I am off to school because uh, that is a reality that's happening in September. <laughs> I am moving, so that's really exciting. And I actually just signed a lease for a new place. So a lot of exciting things are happening and um, some changes are on the horizon but for now it feels really nice to have more of the things that comfort me the bookstore being one of them and it's just nice to be in the space again and just enjoy it for a little while longer before my life is just consumed by endless readings while i'm in law school so yeah welcome back i was so surprised and actually really pleased to receive that email so yeah, so like I mentioned when we were home, I had every intention to make this a themed reading vlog and come on here and tell you about how I changed my mind on books that I had initially not liked or thought I wasn't gonna like and then end up loving them. I still stand very firm in my opinion that this is not a good book. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're going to hear me just roast happy hour. So for all the fans, because this is a beloved book, please just like log out of this video right now. Okay, I <laughs> please don't come for me. But yeah, I don't know, man. This book just annoyed the hell out of me to the point where even my boyfriend was like, why are you reading it? Just put it away. Like you're not enjoying this. So just stop. I made it through 87 pages. So much farther along than I did the first time I tried to read this. So let the record show I did try, but like, I just couldn't do it. If you're unfamiliar with the basic premise of this book, we follow two friends, uh, Isa, who is the main like perspective that we hear on the book. She's essentially the one writing this and her bestie Gala, I think is her name. Yeah. Gala. And they supposedly come from Canada. I'm not really sure because the book literally does not state anything about these two characters other than their like uh, escapades in New York City. So like who the frick knows anything beyond that really. But anyways, these two gals come to New York one summer and uh, they're just, you know, trying to get by. But the main focus of this book and the driving plot, I guess, is their experiences in the New York nightlife scene, the glitz and the glamour and just like romanticizing the hell out of being like a young woman in New York City. So I guess that sounds appealing for like a fun summer chill girl read, but it just was a massive eye roll for me. Like I just could not get into the book at all. Uh, like I said, I just found it to be 
very one dimensional. Like there was nothing particularly interesting about Issa. The, the way that she was analyzing the world around her, I just found really cliche and quite frankly, boring. Like there was nothing like critical or just, yeah, smart or engaging, funny about the way that she was talking about drinking French 75s and eating oysters. Like I just, I just didn't care. <laughs> but my biggest qualm, honestly, is the fact that the author writes these two women, especially Issa, because like I said, that's who we listen to for the most part, in such an unrealistic way. I feel like if I was 16 and reading this book, I would have enjoyed the hell out of it because I would have still had that romanticized vision of like what a young 20 year old is like. It's kind of like the feeling that I would get when I was when I was like in, in high school and watching these like um, teen TV shows on like the CW and just being so impressed at how like funny and like quippy their like replies were, especially with boys or like whoever they they were crushing on. It's kind of the same thing where Lisa expresses herself in such an unrealistic cliche way with 40 year old, year old men that she seems to like be constantly with that I found also really weird. She is said to have all these like crazy traveling and like life experiences. And I'm over here like, bitch, you're literally 21. Like what? And also when she was 18, she was like dating somebody 15 years older than you. So like, was that like a grooming situation? I don't know. It's just all very bizarre. The author really should have upped their age to like 26 or something. And then it maybe would have been more believable. But yeah, I just found the way that she was expressing herself and in these social situations so just cringe. Honestly, it's just very cringe. Like no one talks like that. I'm sorry. They just don't. Her and these men is just honestly so freaking cringy. And the men being like, you're so mysterious. And like, I can't read you. And her being like, yeah, well, like, what can I say? Like all these like very just cliche lines are spewed left, right, and center. And I was just like, I don't know how much more I can do of this. It's just constant partying. At, at one point, I'm just like, can't you guys just like chill at home, like read a book and make yourself some chamomile tea? Like, let's just call it a night, guys. You don't have to go out every night. Maybe I'm just like a cranky, like old grandma who's like pissed that people are having fun in this world. I don't know. Like, maybe I'm just too fucking cynical for this book and I can't just enjoy it for what it is, which is just like a fun little romp, you know, about these two gals just, you know, enjoying themselves in New York but I'm just angry while I was reading it. I was just like, oh my God, when is this going to get any better? And it never seemed to get any better. So here we are. I'm sorry, happy hour, you were just not for me. I thought characters were very one dimensional. The dialogue between the characters was very predictable, very cringe and just like cliche. And it just seems like this is, yeah, just like an unrealistic TV show or movie that we've all seen in our early teen years and where the portrayal of young adulthood is just misconstrued and not at all what it's like in real life. I don't know, maybe I'm just way off, but that's just, that's just my opinion. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, so that was happy hour. I still did not enjoy it and will not finish it, I'm sorry. And then I picked up, no one is talking about this because again, I was hesitant about this book and I didn't actually bring it on my trip for that very reason because I didn't want to lug around a book that I may potentially DNF. But I am just vibing so freaking hard. I mean, there's a big contrast. They're not at all the same, but nothing really is happening in this book and nothing really happened in this one. But the writing out of this world where even though nothing is happening and you're kind of confused, it's still just so such an enjoyable read. Maybe that's the other thing. Like, I just don't think the writing in this was particularly strong. So then it also was like, okay, that doesn't really help anything, you know? <laughs> so anyway, the writing is phenomenal. I'm just like in love with Patricia Lockwood, to be honest. So I think that also informs my like already liking of this book, but I'm only what? 64 pages in and yes, I am. I have turned into a crazy sociopath. I could not find a uh, bookmark for the life of me. So I had to resort to this.
anyways, we are back from my lunch break. I went outside because it was very, it's just a gorgeous day out. And I actually just sneakily watched my dad play tennis. <laughs> if you don't know, we work really closely, um, like close in proximity and there are tennis courts and my dad's an avid tennis player. So I was just spying on him as I was eating my bagel. <laughs> and now I have this to tackle. So what, three, no, four boxes. Uh, are waiting for me to unpack them. So, you know the drill. <laughs> We've been here before. It's time to receive some books, so. Good morning, friends. I brought my literal duvet out <laughs> just to make the couch reading experience all that much better. <laughs> but anyways, I was just reading. I've got my tea with me and I'm reading this and I just remembered another complaint that I had. <laughs> God, I think I'm gonna title this video, you liked happy hour, just don't click on this video. But anyways, something I did not like about this book is that the way the author crafted the characters is by other characters in the book telling Issa or Gala what they were, like giving them attributes. Do you know what I mean? It's like, we're not stupid. As readers, you don't have to be so blatant about aspects of the character's personalities with giving us a scenario or whatever we can figure out what kind of people they are the guys don't have to be like oh you're so witty and like you're so mysterious and da da da, da. like just show me that authors assume that the readers are not gonna get it or that like we're stupid so they have to like spell everything out for us i don't know maybe i'm just being overly nitpicky but i just can't help but think that i already have crafted or can imagine the character in this book, the unnamed woman, just by the little glimpses of her life outside of her being in the portal, AKA social media that Lockwood is showing us. But that just shows just like the masterful way in which she's, yeah, just constructing this character through a very unique way, being that it's all written in fragments, um, stuff that she reads on social media or online as well as like her jumbled in with her own like personal life and you kind of have to discern for yourself so I I guess what I'm trying to say is I really appreciate and prefer when authors let you figure it out they're not holding your hand and just like telling you like this is what you should feel in this moment or like this is what I want you to get about the character like you need to figure it out. Use that, <laughs> use that brain reader. So anyways, yes, I am just really enjoying it. So I'm gonna do some morning reading. My cat is just like crazy today. I don't know what's gotten into him, but <laughs> I'm gonna play with Boo Boo and uh, yeah, we'll see where the day takes us and, and work, obviously. <laughs> I do have to work. <laughs> Hello friends. Don't mind my other friend on my face. Uh, I have finished work, me do this instead um, I have finished work and I decided to come to the park this is my second park outing this summer and I have to say it's just so lovely there's a view for you I have my hydro flask with me and my book so we're gonna do some reading and we'll catch up once I've done that <laughs> See you in a little. Hi friends, it is still the same day. I just came back from the park and I showered, went to the grocery store and I'm just doing more reading and I wanted to catch you up on where I am in the story. So I have reached part two, which I did not expect that at all. I'm not gonna spoil it because all the other booktube friends did such a good job of not spoiling what makes the second half of this book so drastic and just so different from the first half. A very significant and 
unexpected family situation is unfolding before our eyes and it's actually incredibly topical to what is happening in the US at the minute. I hope that doesn't spoil it, but I just can't help but um, make comparisons and parallels in what's going on in our present reality, especially um, in the US, like I said. So yeah, wow, what a, what a time to be reading this book, but it's such an addictive book. I don't wanna stop reading. I just honestly had to go to the grocery store because I have no food at home. <laughs> I just love Patricia Lockwood. She's just so naturally funny and that just comes to life so vividly on the page. Uh, not the second half of the book. I'm, I'm talking more in the first, the later, or the initial half of the book. And I'm just taking it for granted that you know what this is about. But if you don't, the book is written in a fragmentary fashion. First half is uh, we get to know our narrator through a sequence of like uh, tweets or yeah, just fragments. And she weaves together her own life as well as just random little uh, snippets of the internet and what we expose ourselves to on the daily. And she's putting that and translating that to the page. And so the narrator, like I said, she comes to fame through her online presence and accumulation of followers based on this one specific tweet that she um, tweets. <laughs> and that is, can dogs be twins? And that's kind of how uh, her fame or her presence online uh, begins. So yes, uh, and then the later half, a family event occurs that um, kind of grounds her to reality and kind of sucks her out of the portal, AKA the internet, more specifically Twitter or social media. It's done in a really cool and unique way. And like I said, I just love her writing and I'm honestly blown away. I really did not think I would enjoy this book. I don't know why I thought it would be not that deep or just like one more novel that lures the internet, but I feel like it's just so overdone at this point that like it couldn't possibly be that nuanced, but boy was I wrong. And yeah, I'm just eating it up. Like I said, I'm gonna sit here and finish this tonight. I just wanted to express my shock <laughs> in terms of part two, uh, tell you a little bit about the synopsis, like a halfway through this video, which I should have done before. If you were hesitant about picking this up, I say give it a whirl because I am so happy I own this. You have no idea. I've underlined and just thought about so many things that she brings up. And like I said, just especially in the context and where we find ourselves presently, uh, it just makes it all the more relevant and interesting to hear her perspective and just um, engage with the story. So yeah, that's those are my thoughts so far. 10 out of freaking 10. Yes, I'm so happy. I'm going to end this week on a good note because we started off on a bad note. <laughs> so we're going on up and I like it. So yeah, I'm going to keep reading and I'll catch you when when we're done. So I did end up finishing, no one is talking about this last night, and I just needed a moment to collect myself because that was just such a wonderful reading experience and so unexpected. I think I had the erroneous assumption that it was going to be frivolous and just not that deep, and that was not at all <laughs> what I got in the end. So yeah, it was just such a delightful surprise, like I said. I don't even know where to start. I, uh, Patricia's doing so much with this novel, and it works so perfectly, although it sounds very disjointed and all over the place. So like I mentioned, the first half really situates yourself in the cultural landscape that we find ourselves in when we start reading the book, that being American life in like 2020, 2021, um, very just time specific, which I think will be really cool to read later on and have some archival evidence of what this very bizarre and absurd at times internet 
infused life that we live and how, uh, in her case, the unnamed narrator goes from having an online somewhat anonymous presence to then blowing up and being so recognizable and sought after in terms of hosting talks and engaging in dialogue about the portal in her real life and how there doesn't seem to be a distinction between the her existence in the portal and her existence in the real world until part two, which like I said, I'm not gonna spoil, but this family event, if I guess you could say, pulls her out of the portal and anchors her to real life. And it was so well done because it makes her detach herself and place importance or centrality in a matter that is has A, nothing to do with her specifically. She's experiencing all of this and she's pulled away because of something that her sister is experiencing. So we get to feel this event and understand it through her perspective as somebody who's affected by it, no doubt, but in a very different way than the person experiencing it themselves. And again, you could just pull that uh, or use that as a parallel to in our own lives where we are forced to step away and focus our attentions and give space to something very real in our present reality that doesn't exist or we in fact don't want to share that um, to our online viewers or whatever that is. So yeah, I just thought, it, it, like I said before, this book is so incredibly thought provoking and so layered. I feel like it'd be a great book to discuss uh, at a book club setting. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and, and speaking to it being so time specific, I alluded to this earlier, but it's really interesting to read this book with some time having passed since the time it was published, because in the book we hear from the dictator, that being Donald Trump, obviously, and where we are now, we are seeing the repercussions and the consequences of the atrocities that happened during the time that he was in power. I just would love to hear Patricia Lockwood speak of this novel now, uh, because it's all the more telling and it makes the reading experience all the more honestly devastating, uh, but also really compelling because of what we are living presently that, like I said, it's we're now feeling the consequences of what happened during those four years. So yeah, wow, lots to unpack there, but I won't go any further because I don't want to spoil anything. But yes, what a beautiful read. Just the tone of the book too. So distinctly Patricia Lockwood. She's so good at bringing pop culture references and just what it's like to live on the internet and just translate that in such a smart and appealing and so like on the nose and just so perfectly done that it's such a craft and such a gift that she has because I feel like it's such a fine line between it just being cringy and just like whatever to it being so engaging and you find yourself laughing or smirking or yeah just the way she puts sentences together so well freaking done. I will forever read anything that woman comes out with because oh, I'm just blown away. But anyways, yes, I'm so happy to have read it and be in the know <laughs> and just be another person that has immense admiration for her work and what she's trying to do and uh, that she not that she's tried to do really what she accomplished with this novel because that's really she she really she really did it <laughs> um, So yeah, what a great way to end my week. I hope you enjoyed this reading blog Like I've said before it feels really nice to be doing this again, and I hope to see you soon. So yeah Bye